Okay, this has been a um, fun one. Sometimes you get jobs that you really wish you'd never taken on board. <laughs> I mean, in the nicest way. But um, yeah, this one's taken a lot of time. Um, okay, so this one took a bit of a hit coming over from, um, look, in my opinion, probably wasn't packed well enough. Uh, so I'm not going to carry on about uh, the courier involved this time. Normally I do. And um, but yeah, we have, as you can see, there's a transistor sitting below that board there. That was dry jointed off it, and um, um, I've actually mounted it a different way. It normally sits out from that board towards the valve. Now I've mounted it an entirely different way uh, for a reason, to be honest, um, uh, to stop it. It gave me a lot more uh, legs on the transistor to put straight to the board, and of course it, it uh, doesn't need any. Um, it actually acts like a diode in there. It's a long story how that all works, but anyway, this is the um, Infron DX1D, and uh, as you can see, the transformer we've tried to straighten that up as much as possible. Um, it um, it took some some massive hits, and I don't know if you can see on the video, but it's still slightly slanted. But um, uh, they originally were a little bit, but not as much as this was. Uh, we've had to bend some cases back a bit, and etc. Um, and anyway. I'm not going to go into the whole if buts and ends um, we still got one little strange issue with this one which uh, to be honest um, uh, my client may end up you know sort of living with I'm not sure but um, we'll get on to that but let's just have a look um, uh, now I'm just putting about um, uh, actually how many watts are we putting into it let's just turn the off operate off for a second and about 40 watts we're putting into it so we're going to go into operate and um, just come over a bit. Um, now um, we're getting about, about 700 watts. Arlo picking on 800 watts, and that agrees. We're on the um, bird with the 500 watt, but I'm on the bottom scale. Um, and I'll just bring that in again. Come on. Right on six between 60 and 80, so that's um, 700 watts there, with about 40 watts input to it. So yeah, look, that's doing fine. Um, that's, that's no issue there, but um, these amps, um, Rudy designed a great amp, they really, um, and this one's not particularly noisy too, um, the blowers on the DX1D versus some of the 2 and 3s etc um, are not uh, anywhere near as noisy, which are, um, you, you could definitely put up with this, it's uh, not a problem, um, And um, but um, yeah, uh, this is one very very dead 4CX800 and uh, but yeah I've still got to see I think there's something wrong on the timing circuit on this still um, and uh, I'm, all I'm doing at the moment is I'm literally running it up um, and and just um, making sure that it's loading correctly and, and keeping on just its, um, its power and and sort of seeing that it does what it should do but um, and, and that all looks very good uh, the things that worry me a little bit lower on its voltage um, and this could be someone's had a play with it at some stage there's a number of adjustments for different things that can cause different uh, problems so uh, the HV voltages look fairly good this meter doesn't actually represent what's happening see how that's dropping back there so much um, sorry to get that in there um, um, it's going down about 2 kV which is when we measure, measure that voltage it's not uh, so I think that's something in the LED system that is, is a bit sort of strange um, once again you know uh, this has had one hell of a knock coming over um, it's, um, it's just one that I really we're probably going to need to if we're authorized to that's a big question uh, we're probably going to need to still sort of chase what the heck's going on there um, with uh, I think it's got a problem in its timing circuit and by that um, sometimes what's happening uh, every now and again is we unplug it and basically plug it back in yep no props um, and I had to do this numerous times because what happened is one of the times plug 240 volts in turned it on nothing happened I thought what and then um, I couldn't turn it on for quite a bit. And I thought that's weird. Then I 
basically uh, hit the on off switch a couple of more times and it fired up perfectly you know so as far as lights uh, didn't have a, a working valve in at that stage but we actually had HV coming off it so it was sort of better uh, than um, than what um, what we'd uh, had initially but yes yeah, so I unfortunately I don't believe that we're, we're totally on top of this one yet um, and I'm doing this video more for uh, my uh, my client just to sort of know where we're at at the moment um, I, you know, I only did this as a bit of a favor job as you guys know I don't do repairs anymore um, like as a um, as a um, commercial thing at all but um, I'll I won't go into the details of this right now they may want to keep that private but it's going on a um, it's for a public use if I just say it's for a public use sort of uh, application uh, that's what inspired me to, to try and see if we can uh, get them going for it but um, yeah um, and just I suppose the lesson in this is that not always will it just be pop a valve in pop it out now I because I saw the damage that was done to this and we had bits literally moving around in this that broken off and I've resold all those back on <laughs> um, it's hard to know this was a donation uh, to a particular uh, institution so it's very hard to know what condition this was in even before it got uh, shipped to us um, uh, although from what I understand they were having no trouble turning it on and at least seeing the HV voltage so I remember asking questions just to say guys look you know um, it's all right that you think it's a valve but um, are we seeing HV you know sort of um, and what's the what's the go there um, and um, yeah look they, they certainly um, indicated I think they said they between 2.5 2.7 I would have expected this to be a little bit higher to be honest um, about 2.7 normally on this so uh, as I said you know someone could have tried to adjust it who knows anyway nice to sort of see that you know we're getting uh, some um, some power out of this thing here um, it's certainly certainly working um, that's 500 times 2 equals 700 watts with 40 watts in so yeah I mean I'm, I'm happy that it's it's working but as I said uh, there's more to go on this one so we'll come back to this again tomorrow and um, just see what else um, uh, we need to um, need to look at um, the um, the one thing I would say is that there are better people on Mtrons this was just supposed to be a uh, valve replacement then ship it back um, where on Acom we've got diagnostic tools that help us so much um, it can we, we can nail down things a lot lot faster um, Mtron didn't really have the same type of fault finding uh, uh, and don't get me wrong they did have a system uh, it's just it's a matter of if you've got to be someone a bit more experienced on Mtron uh, to um, uh, to be able to really get into a lot of the timing issues and bits and pieces of, of how their boards work so um, and if you're one of those people um, and you've got a full service manual for one of these things uh, that can be emailed through please offer <laughs> I'd definitely like to have a look um, because um, uh, I've got a fairly rough circuit and um, but the service manual would be so good to be able to just double check what other people have done and because um, uh, it's very possible this one's been looked at by somebody uh, before and they've got a simple adjustment problem and some of these timing issues and turning on issues I'm talking about because remember that they've got to have a heat up time so these things they don't just naturally turn on and you go bang you can transmit straight away you've, you've got to wait for them to click in and um, as obviously controlled by the uh, operate and uh, standby switch um, but even if um, like when I turn this on uh, if I was to turn that off right now now let's see if it actually turns back on and now this is going to be an interesting test I've left 240 volts still plugged in so let's have a look yep now it's going to come up it's building up its voltage it's doing its little cross check as you saw with this SWR and that's actually fired up okay here the fan uh, the muffin come in go to operate that fault light will stay on until it has actually gone through its timer functions a lot of people think um, oh my amps faulty but no you, you'll see this this will um, come off in a few um, yeah now that's the other thing with ACOM if you turn off and turn on between a certain like a short amount of time it'll only give you a very short you know 15 20 second bang you're back up and running I think with them trying it it makes you do the full deal so um, just um, bear with me this video might go a little bit longer just based on the fact that uh, uh, although I can fix that hang on if I just let it hang on I'll just turn the video I, I, saw, I thought I let it go a minute or so um, it's probably going to be another minute but I thought you don't need to sit there watching this light for that whole time um, but it still might be another I think they take about 180 seconds um, to um, 150 to 180 somewhere around there so I've sort of saved you a minute of watching it but um, 
there we go okay so yeah um, very similar to ACOM in the fact that you're probably um, 150 to 180 seconds before you um, you actually switch on and let's have a look here um, what am I doing here uh, am I right oh I'm not transmitting oh sorry I've hit the split button by mistake oh, have I I think I did yeah I did too <laughs> I, I had my hand here and I was like I must have knocked it so I'm thinking all of a sudden it's giving no output and I'm like hang on I haven't changed it's saying it thinks it's on 20 meters and I thought well hang on all right yeah sure enough yeah so still still hello 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 yeah okay um look I yeah um okay the person who's receiving this video you know who you are um you can see that we still want to have a bit more of a play yet um and um I don't like this amp yet at all. Um, it, it's look, it's doing output, uh, but there's still a timer issue. There's something going on with it, um, so we'll have a chat about that. All right. Well, look, this is the DX1D. Generally, look, you know, if you don't throw this thing around like a football, uh, they're a good amp. I've got no complaints about. They are different to how they do the job versus Acom in a lot of the ways that we would attack the, um, uh, you know, the various faults on them, the diagnostics. But look, to be perfectly honest, I've got an Acom 2000 that's driving me mental right now. Um, and we've got a lot of a lot of parts going into that, and it's still giving us trouble. Um, we know what's happened. It, it had an over-voltage, and um, uh, we, we were able to nail that down. And uh, through the previous owner, we got a fair bit of information. But uh, so, you know, uh, just so you know, this is not a, a shot at Mtron. Um, Acom can have some disastrous faults as well. Um, which you know you just got to work through and you just you know and we're as I said I'm pulling my hair out on another one which is and that's a mate job too where um, but uh, a good mate actually and it's embarrassing because it should be done by now but anyway uh, but yeah just to give you an idea that uh, sometimes uh, these these can be more complex than just simply throw a valve in and this one is proving to be hmm, a little bit that way anyway we've got a lot more going on it than it was a few days ago but let me tell you there's probably eight hours gone into this so far sorting out all the problems so far so gives you an idea how much time you can spend on amps they can they can take up a lot of time all right thanks very much um i took a break to go work a, a chap in namibia on 10 meters so you, you'll hear, see that video on there um but uh, most of the day has been spent on this dx1d what a pain well and thursday night to be fair anyway you get good ones and you get hard ones and this one definitely is a nasty one all right guys 73s and um don't know if we'll do an update to this. We'll see how we go. Um, there's a lot to do with the uh, chap that owns it, but we'll, um, we'll see how we go. All the best. VK3CM, Tangam, Malanga, Northeast Victoria. Cool.